Hallelujah. You know when God wants to change your life, your prayer point must change. The way you know you are growing spiritually is this. Your prayers start changing. That's how you know you are praying. You are growing. Your prayers will start changing. Because if you are, see, let me tell you, if you are praying for the same thing for five years, something is wrong. Your prayer should have been changing. Praise the Lord. Your problems should not be the same problems you have. They should be changing also. Because you are scaling the other ones and newer ones are coming. All right, let's, let's get into it tonight. Let's get into it tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I don't even know. I know in Jesus' name. <laughs> Pastor, did you talk about that laziness to avoid problems? Did you talk about that on Sunday? You talk about it on Sunday. Okay. Let me start from there because I want to read two scriptures from Sunday, then I'll continue from today. Proverbs 22, verse 13. Proverbs 22, verse 13. Proverbs 22, verse 13. Let's read on the screen. Hallelujah. One to go. The sluggard says, there is a lion outside. I shall be slain in the street. Watch this now. When he says the sluggard says, it means the lazy man says that the reason why I'm doing nothing and I'm stuck inside is because there's this huge lion or obstacle outside. And if I attempt to engage the lion, I'll be killed. And the Bible defines that not as bravery. The Bible defines that laziness. What is laziness? Bible definition of laziness is to see problems and avoid it. Bible definition of laziness is to see problems and allow problems to stop you from achieving your goal. That is a classic definition of problems. And that's why on Sunday, I'm going to teach on how to, what on Sunday? How to come out of trouble. Do you, do you have that thing on, on, at the screen at the back? How to come out of trouble and complicated setback. That's it. How to come out of trouble and complicated setback. And let me tell you something. If you know people that have gotten themselves in trouble, marital trouble, financial trouble, this is their service. You know why? Not just because I'm teaching, because the anointing is going to be working. Of course, as just Christ taught the word, the spirit fell. Because the spirit backs up the word. So, the Bible says this. It says, the, so you need to think about it. Many of you are here, and, and today, as I talk about how to win in the workplace... One of the things you must realize is this. There will always be challenges. There will be people challenges. There will be financial challenges. There will be pressure all over the place. But the question is this. This is the question. This is the question. If you keep running away because there are challenges, the Bible doesn't say you're smart. It said you are lazy. If because your marriage is somehow you want to pack up, the Bible says you're a lazy husband. If your marriage is somehow and you want to pack up, is it you're a lazy wife? Some of you, you are so addicted to pornography and you wonder, I can't help it. Listen, just the thought you can't help it. It's a lazy thought. Some of you need to do business expansion and you need a hundred million to expand your business. That's a lot of money, I know that. But if that's what you need, that's what you need. Never say, see, Listen to me. As a child of God, there's some things you should never say beside a living God. Never say it is impossible or I can't. Because the Bible says with God, all things are possible. This church is a huge testimony. I've said it over and over again. There was a time I started this church and some, and we needed 3,000 around to continue holding services. And I raised the money in the church and nobody could pay for it and we closed down the services. But look at us today. Our staff strength is maybe about 100 or over 100 that work in harvesters. But something I've learned is this. And look at me. Something I've learned is this. See, if you grow up in Nigeria, one thing you'll learn without going to school is this. How to abandon problems. How to ignore problems. Since when I was young, there's been traffic on Tottenham Bridge. Yes or no? It's going to be there for the next 20 years. Don't we have government? No. Since, since when I was young, to get a passport had always been a problem. Yes or no? Yes. We keep, since when I was young, there has been no power. Yes or no? Yes. 
But you still keep having, let me tell you, the bad side of this, you keep pointing to the government, oh, listen, that's the part you don't want to go to. What you should think about is how it's affecting you as a person. Because you're growing in a culture that ignores problem, you also adopt it as a person. So most of us have adopted ignoring problems as a way of life. Someone says, this is the funniest thing people say to me. Why do you visit school? I say, ah, it's because of Nepal. You know, diesel, so expensive. I'm like, before you started the business, was there no Nepal problem? How come Nepal problem now close down your business? Some things are no longer problem to us. It's lifestyle. For example, all of it are doing business. Just in case you don't know, what kills business in the first five years is funding. And here you are, you want to go into business, and you have no plan for funding. What will happen? Like others have died, you will also die. But that's not your portion. Amen. But I wish you can do more than amen. See, I'm only saying so because I just want to be honest with you as a pastor. Christians always feel as if I can just ignore things. And as long as I can pray, a miracle will happen. Of course, that happens sometimes. But that's not God's best. See, this scripture is very powerful. It says, the sluggard man, can you leave the scripture back on the screen? See, what is it? Let's see, want to go. The slothful man saith, there's a lion without, I will be slain in the street. So some lady says that I will not date again because all the guys I've dated are jerks. Have you solved the problem? No. Have you ignored the problem? Yes. And the Bible says that's laziness. See what the Bible says? This is what, this is what the Bible says about you. You want to know what the Bible says about you? Proverbs 30, 30. Oh, you'll love the scripture. Proverbs 30, 30. I love it. I don't write in church. I really feel bad for you. Want to go? A lion is the strongest amongst beasts and turn it not away for what? Hey, hold on. Who is this lion? Hold on before you conclude. Is it the devil? How do we know? The Bible says this. The devil goeth around what? Like a roaring lion, listen to me, it didn't say it was a lion, it says his movement is like, he's even compared him to a lion, it compared him to the movement of a lion. Like a roaring lion looking for whom in the devour. So the devil is not a lion because the Bible never called him that. But who did the Bible call lion? The Bible says that Jesus is the lion of the tribe of what? Judah. Wow. And First John says, as he is in heaven, so are we on earth. So if he's the lion of the tribe of Judah, and I'm also connected to him, I am a lion in the tribe of Judah. Meaning, as a lion, I do not turn away from any. Bible, see, when you see a lion in the jungle, lion doesn't run, no. Say, waiting. Hey, something happened here, the lion is running. Ah, this is my jungle. Bible says, it turneth not away for any beast. Question, why is it small capital you've closed down? Small trouble you have closed down. Small this you have closed down. Why? The reason why is that in your image, in that image, you don't even see yourself as a lion. What will make a lion die of hunger? All other beasts are dead. Glory to God. This is very powerful for you. And so on Sunday, we look at the David of David and Goliath. And specifically, specifically, I, I, I just want to make sure. Hmm. Yeah. Specifically, we looked at how David defeated Goliath. And what I want you to see is this. 
See, because why am I bringing that back today? Because everybody needs to fight. Because what I'm talking today, you're about to say, you have to fight your, for your dreams without letting go. And I've already dealt with the first thing which I prayed about today. The reason most people let go of their dream is not because they want to let go. There's no emotional strength to pursue their dreams. And that's what happens. People just get to a place, they've been so hurt, they've been so disappointed, they are so exhausted, they just let their dream and it just goes away. That's what happens. And many of you are in that category. See, you'll be surprised that many people, this is just February, they've forgotten the goals and resolution they made in January. So soon, just six weeks, everything is over. So how do you fight for your dreams without letting go? But look at the composition. You have to fight for your dreams. Some of you have a dream to build a business that will be worth 250 billion. That's wonderful. Some of you have a dream to build an international business. That's wonderful. Some of you have a dream of a, a great marriage where the husband and wife love each other and your kids grow up to be great. That's wonderful. Some of you have dreams to, become, to have a bank. That's wonderful. Question, do you even have dreams? Do you have a place where your dreams are written? I want to ask you something. Do you know if you don't have dreams, you don't have a future? If you don't have dreams, you will work for those that have dreams. And someone say, have dreams. If your dream is not written down, I don't take you seriously. You know why? Someone says, really? Because God takes writing so seriously, when angels appear to people, the angel will tell them, oh boy, write. Imagine, this is why I've seen a vision. In the vision, the angel takes writing so powerful, he says, write. Writing is miraculous. He said, you have a dream. Why have you written it? You don't have a dream. The things that are important to you are on your phone. Where is your dream? It's on your phone. What you have is a wish. And a wish is not a dream. First Samuel chapter 17, anyway. So, we don't bow down for... So, if there are capital problems, we raise the money. Yes or no? Yeah. If there, what, what are problems today? If there are policy problems, we fix it. We, we don't back down. We, we go forward. We go forward. First Samuel chapter 17. So let me give you the three essentials and we'll close the service. Hmm. The problems, you know, yet last night, let me, let me just say, last night I had a meeting, late meeting with one guy. He's Canadian. When I say he's Canadian, he didn't go and get the Canadian part. No, he was born in Canada and raised in Canada. So one of them was Canadian. I said, wow. I said, why did you move back to Nigeria? He, he told me something. He said, what will you become in Canada? I said, eh? I said, of us are going there. He said, what will you become in Canada? He said, as far as you have black skin, what you can get to is limited. He said, you think people that invite you to their country do not have a plan to keep you on that, on that check before you take over that country? He said, they will be stupid to invite people to their country and not have a method to hold them like this. He said, it's another kind of colonialism. He said, the first time they took sheep to carry us away to Sugarland, he said, now they use economic factor to carry us away. We'll go there, work for them, prosper their land, expand their land, and we'll go back and come back again. I said, Jesus Christ. <laughs> he said, I was born, he said, I'm a born Canadian. I didn't, I, I didn't, I'm born Canadian. He said, I grew up there. He said, my, he said, my first 20 years or so, I was in Canada. That's why I say you have to pray that God will give you superior sights. When you enter planes to Nigeria, you see white people with all our Ebola, all our broken arm, they are coming full force to Nigeria. When you enter a plane out of Nigeria, you see Nigerians, the way they've dressed, it's obvious that they're not coming back. <laughs> you know. Glory to God. All, all right, let's go. Let's go. So the Bible says this. Um, so let's go. 
Bible says in verse 22, this was when David had gone into the battle. And David left his carriage in the hands of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And he said unto them, Behold, as he talked with them rather, Behold, the comet of the champion, the Philistine of God, Goliath by name, out of the armies of Philistine, and spake according to the same words. And David heard him. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were so afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. It shall be that the man that kills him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake unto them and said, What shall be done to the man that killed the Philistine? And take it away the reproach. Watch this now. Take note of that. And take it away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that it should defile the armies of the living God? And the people answered him and said, So shall it be done unto the man that killed him. Verse 28. And Eliab, his elder brother, heard when he said all this unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why comes thou thither? With whom have you left the few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride in the naughtiness of their heart, for you have come that you may see the battle. Oh my God. And David said, What have I now done? And David said the big thing. He said, Is that not what? He said, It's not a cause. If you're going to fight and win in your career, three things you must know. Number one, the fight is not about you. There's a superior cause. Let me tell you something. Every time you realize that there is a superior cause, you give more to it. Every, let me tell you, have you watched movies where they torture somebody to give up a secret? Most of the time, if they are hardened people, they don't talk. But once they bring their child, you hear? Please don't touch him. He has nothing to do with this. Please don't touch him. He has nothing to do with this. Please don't touch him. Because, because, because there is a superior cost now. Listen to me. Once you think that success in life is just about you, you can never go far. But once you remind yourself, I have to succeed for God's glory. I, see, not do I have success for glory. Listen, it's for, let me explain to you. I don't, have to, I don't just have to succeed for God's glory. I have to succeed to show my children that success is a possibility. It's not about me. It's not about me. My children need to see that success is possible against all odds. And when things are difficult, listen to me. It's difficult for a poor parent to challenge a child to be successful. Because if it was that easy, mommy, why didn't you succeed? But if you can succeed, you can look at your wife. You can look at your child. You can look at your cousin and say, hey, it was difficult, but we made it through. That's why you make up your mind. Because I need to succeed to have a testimony for my family to share. I need to succeed to have a testimony for my family to share. Moses said, is there not a cause? The reason why you give up so easily is that you think it's about you. It's always about you. If you're going to fight and not let go of your dreams, you must think that this thing is not about me. I'm fighting a battle. I'm fighting my battle for myself and for generations to come. Let me tell you something, and you pastors listen to this. One of the reasons I'm radical in my faith is this. I'm not your pastor because I gather you together. I'm your pastor and your leader because I'm ahead of you in faith. I must show you example that shows this is possible. Because there's no entitlement in title. It's impact that determines status in life. And the other hey, don't you know me? What's don't you know me? Show what you can do, sir. In this kingdom, they don't talk. You show. You show what you can do. I'm saying so to you because many of you here, a single man of you are married here. When your child grows up, will he know you as a man of fear or a man of faith? Will he be able to say, this is what my father did and because he had audacious faith? Or he will say, he will not be able to say anything. 
David said, is there not a cause? So every warrior knows it's not about me. There's a superior cause to this. The reason why I go to that work and have audacious dream is not about me. There's a superior cause to this. The reason why I fight for the marriage, it's not about me. There's a superior cause to this. And let me tell you something. It's one thing to even think of, oh my, can I go deeper tonight? Many of you, God is depending on you to cross family boundaries. There are certain things that nobody has done in your family before. And God is saying, Funke, can you be the first person? Victor, can you be the first person? Ola, can you be the first person? Because once you cross the line, you open the door for others to follow through. But the way you will open the door is not by fear. The way you will open the door is by radical faith. It's the faith that is crazy. It's faith that is insane. It's faith that is impossible. Glory to God. When I started the church, my mother reminded me that there's nobody that is a pastor in the family. See, not even pastor that he's a pastor. pastor. Thought of starting a church. I said, start from somewhere. Your family, everybody was polygamous. It must stop somewhere. Your family, everybody died at 50 with a heart attack. It must stop somewhere. Your family, nobody ever owned their house. Everybody was renting. It must stop somewhere. Your family, nobody ever left houses for their children. It must start somewhere. And that person it starts from must be you. The reason why you're not audacious, because you think this about you. You really think this about you. David looked at Eliab. He said, you think this about me? Is that not a cause? There is a cause. There is a cause. The reason why I'm saying, I'm giving you reasons to keep fighting, even when it seems tough. Because sometimes it'll get so tough. But I want to think of, if I give up, when I'm dying, what I'll tell my children that I gave up. Is that what I would tell my children? They will look at me in the face and I'll look at them and say, I gave up. Or I look at them and say, son, it was very tough. What we came through. I want to ask you, how do you encourage your child to have faith and follow through if you cannot have faith and follow through as an adult? How? There are, there are families that are so wrecked that it's the parents that teach their children how to borrow money. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. You can pretend as if you don't know, but I know you know what I'm talking about. Their fam the, the mother will call the daughter and say, we have to eat all. Whatever you have to do, go and do. And she knows what she's saying. And the reason why she says so that that's how she survived. That's how she ended up where she is. And she's now raising another generation. That will be like that. And you think I will not fight. Where is it going to stop? And that fight is a fight of faith. <laughs> David said, it's not a cause. And listen to everybody. Look at, look at me, everybody. I might just say one or two things and we have to close. I don't have time again. If you don't fight the fight that you were ordained to fight, guess what will happen? You will fight battles you were not called to fight. How do I mean? Instead of you to fight for something that is life-changing, you will fight things that, that have no meaning. Many of you are busy fighting for likes on social media, things that have no meaning. Many of you are vi busy fighting for people's approval, things that have no meaning. Many of you are busy fighting for attention, things that have no meaning. Many of you are busy fighting for things that have no meaning. The reason why is that everybody fights for something, but can you fight for what is valuable? That's the truth. Everybody's fighting for something. Some of you are here, you're fighting for something. There's a bigger cause. Did you notice Eliab could not fight Goliath, but was fighting David? I wish I was David. I'll say, hey, boy, if you have power, go. 
I'm telling you. Instead of you to fight to start a cell, instead of you to fight to win the gospel, you'll be seeing the HOD that is slim, the one that has no minister, and the pastor is talking. What are they doing with the building? You don't, that's the kind of battle because you need to fight something. And since your hand is empty, Satan will give you empty fight to fight. Ah, so people are fighting fight of no fight. Juggling up and down, juggling up and down, there's nothing there. Juggling up and down, nothing there. So much action, no progression. And because the devil has given them a fight to fight, I refuse to fight no fight. I will fight for a cause. I will fight for a purpose. Why do I fight? Number two, David said, Who, what will be done to the man that removed the reproach from Israel? Why do warriors fight? Number two reason, they fight to advance the kingdom. Ah. They understand this fight is not about me. It's for, someone says, listen to me. If all the reason you want to be rich is for you to have a great life, all your money will be small. Because all the money you need to have a great life is not too much. It's just, just, a, just so much more money. But when you see how much pornography is, how much is spent, some say that, some say that, you know what? I want to be so rich, I can wipe out my labor from Nigeria. My God. Some say, I want to be so rich that just in my lifetime, I can fund crusades that will save a hundred million people. My God. That is fighting for a kingdom to expand. You say, Lord. I don't know why we have not moved to Antony yet, but if you can try me, I can write a check for 100 million. And let me tell you something. See, not very long from here, many of you will start giving 10 million, 20 million, 30 million. And it will be nothing to you because you've linked the principle that the reason I'm fighting. See, let me say something to you. Many of you have to go into politics, not because it's nice, because you have to fight. Because when they want to bring policies against the church, God needs your voice to stand against them. Some of you need to fight because there will be a time the body of Jesus will need someone that has a voice to get it from Pilate. The body of Jesus will need someone that can get that body from Pilate. The point is, any smart thing at work is so stressful. Any smart thing at work, they are so oppressive. Any smart thing, hey, will you keep white and stop being petty? That is called life. Focus on your assignment. Focus on your mission. Soldiers are not petty. Soldiers work to please the master. You please while you are called. Any small thing, I'm tired of entrepreneurship. It's not working. It's not this. It's not that. It's not this. It's not that. What is this and that? Because you don't remember that you, you fight for a superior cause. There's a kingdom to fight. There's a kingdom to expand. When I see all those girls on Allen, when I see all those girls in phase two, who wear all those clothes, I review that clothes in Farm City, in the place, there's a fight I have to fight. You know why? Most of those girls, the money they even make is not for themselves. There's a godmother somewhere that they take that money to and she gives them a part. It's a whole cabal. And we can tell people and say, hey, we will bring our money and money for money. Hallelujah. Say, put, sit and put down your cash. We put down our cash. What are we talking about? You go to Unak on a Friday night. You see, you see all those wicked men and women drive into the place. Go and take people that are young enough to be their children and sleep with them. 50-year-old man to 20-year-old girls. And there are student men and women that are organizing it. And some of those men are not clean. They're using diabolical powers. When they sleep with them, something goes wrong with those girls. But those girls are so impoverished, they cannot think. And when the girl says, I'm going out, how much do you give 50k? We say, don't go out. From the church, 70k. Ah. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. I said we, we, we match it for money for money. And, and, and if this is your thinking, then you can't think small. If this is your thinking, it's going to be difficult. Because Satan knows once you have the box, you're going to change things. So he's going to make things difficult. But 
It doesn't matter how difficult it makes it. Bible says, 1 John 5, 4, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith. Our faith is victorious. Hallelujah. It's victorious on Monday. It's victorious on Tuesday. It's victorious on Wednesday. It's victorious on Thursday. It's victorious on Friday. It's victorious on Saturday. It's victorious on Sunday. If you believe, say amen, somebody. See, what I'm saying to you is this. If you're really going to succeed in life, you must have a bigger purpose for career and life success more than yourself. That's what I'm saying to you. What was the secret of David? David got to battle. He said, see, David understood something. If he didn't kill Goliath, there's no way he'll become a slave. Hope you know that. David can always protect himself. He can always fight for himself. But he thought of the whole of Israel. He thought that a Goliath was insulting the God of Israel. And he says, who is this uncircumcised, idiotic, stupid, huge, having no sense, doesn't descend truth and revelation to come and speak against the God of Israel? He says, who, he said, what will be done to the man that takes away the reproach? He said, he would take away, he would take, David said, what to be, he, David gave himself name, the man that taketh away the reproach. You look at your family, the way your parents stay, they should not be staying there. You take the reproach from the family. You come to a church like this, say, no, 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 no. He says, it's hot, it's hot. He says, why is it so hot? Say, why is, it, is that why you're, why it's so hot? You don't talk to me. You say, where's the pastor? Sir, please, can they remove one, two, three, four? He said, what do you mean by that? This is a check, sir. I've just ordered for brand new races. They will deliver it tomorrow. You know how many sisters in church? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And there's at least two hallelujah also. <laughs> many sisters in church can never pray for the will of God because this thing is important. Brothers, you need to take care of the approach. Oh. You, 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 should I talk? Yeah. All these girls are saying that, ah, I'm willing for a good man, a godly man. They are a city. When they find a godly man, why do they ask for iPhone, not Bible? Maybe it's God the man you're looking for. What should a God the man have? <laughs> Someone say, well, what about the iPhone that is in the Bible? You should have said that you're looking for a godly rich man. But brothers, it's not their fault. What will take away the reproach? When they find brothers that can spend on you and don't demand for sex, what would they do for all those silly boys they love for? They will spend on you, take care of you. After everything, I'll drop you at home. Ah, eh? Because normally when they go out like that, after they have demanded, they will not lay them down on the altar sacrifice. I lay down my lifetime before the altar forevermore. I will lay there. I said, no, 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 no. He said, oh, he said, I, you know, just, ah, she's so shocked. Are you upset with me? I'm not upset with you. I thought we were going to go and chill. No, no, no. But we're Christians. How can we do that? <laughs> when they go back and meet their Shinene friends and they show them the iPhone and the cash, she said, ah, how many rounds do you guys do? Said, what do you want to buy rounds? We're Christians. <laughs> we don't do rounds. We express the love of Jesus. She then goes, oh, wow. What church do you go to? Harvestas, of course. Where we are changed. See, when I say I'm a member, of course, also. Let's pray.